All right, we have two more companies. The next one is M Fluid X. Presenting for the M Fluid X are Charlie Yeah and Danica Held. Hi, my name is Charlie Yeh. Our mission is to fight epidemics with rapid molecular diagnostics. Recently, our co-founder Danica traveled to Brazil to Dr. Silvia and Gubio's lab, the first scientists that discovered Zika in Brazil. In one single lab, there were thousands of patients backlogged waiting to be tested for Zika. Patients are waiting months to get their results back. Without rapid, accessible diagnostics to determine who is infected, diseases continue to spread. This is exactly what happened with Zika, and this is also a general case with outbreaks. Unfortunately, current solutions are insufficient. For example, the dipstick test, similar to the similar to the pregnancy test, is affordable. However, it's not sensitive enough to detect early case uh, detection. And the PCR, though it's very sensitive, it is very costly. Each machine can cost between 10k to 100k, and it's not easily portable. Since it's gonna, it cannot be done near the patient, results can da take days. M's Fluidix solution is the fast chip, a, fa a field-ready, affordable, sensitive, and trackable solution. This technology was originally funded by the Gates Foundation and DARPA. I was originally lead inventor of the fast chip during my PhD studies at UC Berkeley. We will have Danica, who has a PhD in infectious disease from Berkeley, show you a demo. The entire fast chip kit can be carried in a bag. Please switch to the projector, please. To operate the chip, the user simply opens a vacuum pouch, which activates the chip. The chip requires zero power because everything is driven by vacuum. Next, the user simply loads a sample into an inlet. Here, we are using food dye for visualization. In the field, we will be using blood or purified DNA. Fully loading the chip takes about 10 minutes. Here, we have a completed chip that we loaded before the presentation. Next, the user activates a heat, reusable heat pack by a simple, simple click, then places the chip onto the heat pack for 30 minutes. An internal chemistry amplifies the DNA on the chip, and if the, if the pathogen is present, microwells on the chip will start to fluoresce. To see the fluorescence, the chip is placed into a simple optical box, and a smartphone is used to take endpoint pictures of the results. Results come out within one hour, so patients don't have to wait for days to get the results. Switch back to the slides, please. This is what's happening on the chip. Blood is loaded into an inlet and automatically sucked into hundreds of microwells. In each of these microwells, the little blue dots that you see, an independent DNA or RNA amplification test occurs. The chip requires zero power because it runs on vacuum. This portable pumping format separates us from all the other microfluidic technology out there because no external equipment such as pumps, controllers, computers, and valves are necessary. This is why Enfluidix solution is so much more affordable and low cost. At scaled manufacturing, the chip and the reader will be orders of magnitude lower cost than PCR solutions. We are using isothermal nucleic acid amplification, which has comparable sensitivity with PCR tests, the industry standard. Here is an example of the results that we have. The more green dots that you see, the higher the pathogen concentration. 
It's a quantitative test. There is a direct correlation between the number of microwalls lit up and the concentration of pathogens. In the future, using multiple wells on the chip, we aim to screen for multiple diseases within one single chip. We're building a trackable platform, an app that tracks GPS data, patient info, and test results. So this becomes a powerful disease tracking network. We hope to enable ministries of health to optim optimally deploy the resources at hotspots. Initially, we plan to launch this as a research toolkit. Then, after integrating sample prep and clearing FDA approval, we'll market this as a, as a human diagnostic kit. Zika is not the first nor the last outbreak. In the past century, we had hundreds of outbreaks. There is an urgent and growing need for rapid decentralized diagnostics. Enfolytics is pushing forward technology that can potentially impact millions of lives. We invite you to join this mission to fight Zika and the next 100 outbreaks. Thank you. Stuart, did you want to start again? Or? I, got, I got a lot of questions and not enough time, but the, so what, how much does that cost? What's the dollar per unit that, um, for you to manufacture these chips? To manufacture the whole unit, yeah. Uh, to manufacture the chips, it will be about four dollars okay. by injection molding. And then the unit, you know, the, the reader will be a uh, couple hundred dollars. Uh, we estimate between three to five hundred. And so, who ends up buying these? Like, I assume it goes beyond the center of disease control. So initially, we'll be marketing this as a research toolkit. Uh, we talked to. Uh, the disease surveillance teams, uh, people who are looking at uh, mosquito surveillance and just looking at disease spread, uh, the researchers or laboratory scientists, they, they are interested in this. In the later stage, uh, after clearing the FDA, we plan to market this as a human diagnostic test. Okay. Meaning that I buy it and diagnose myself. No, no, so we're targeting uh, governments, um, ministries of health, uh, Defense departments and hospitals and clinics. Okay. Maybe you could talk a little bit about the accuracy now that you're seeing, and also how many diseases do you think eventually these chips can detect? A single chip, how many in one chip? Sure. Currently, the chip detects a range of 10 uh, copies of DNA per microliter to 10 to the 5 copies of DNA per microliter. Um, so, to give you a perspective, a lateral flow, say the dipstick test, is doing about 10 to the 5 copies of molecules per microliter. So um, that, that's, that's the range. Uh, also, our, our chips currently contain over 200 microwells. Uh, those are completely independent reactions. And we can print uh, specific primers and probes for different diseases into each of those microwells and have a highly multiplex gamma. So if there's a new strain of flu in a given winter, do you need to create a new diagnostic for that? Or does your, is it highly likely that what you've already built will be able to detect? So the hardware will remain the same. The chip in the reader is the same fundamental yeah. uh, technology. And the chemistry is mostly the same, but we will change a part that's called primers. So we'll, uh, redesign some uh, the primer sets, which are short strain strands of sequences of DNA. And how long would that take to do? Uh, so it depends on how quickly the sequences for the new pathogen come out. Um, but that tends to be one of the first things we learn about a new outbreak is, is the DNA sequence. And it's really rapid to develop primer sets to use those pathogens. Is the, is the target the governments that don't have these expensive 100K machines? Is it everyone who doesn't have those machines? That is one target, but in the future use, uh, several years down the road, we see this kind of technology not only in developing worlds, but also in developed worlds. Imagine you going to your primary care doctor. The current situation is you go to, if you do a DNA test, you go to the primary care doctor. Uh, they send it to a t DNA testing center. You get re your results back several days. But now, if the primary, primary doctor has this kit, you can test within one hour, find out which kind of flu you have, 
if it's bacterial, bacterial or viral. Got it. So you guys are going to focus more on consumers eventually. Do, do you see on the long term being able, being able to uh, reduce the cost of the reader so that people can self-diagnose themselves? Because I, I think that's a really exciting part of the business. But Yeah, so in the future it may be possible to just have a colorimetric assay and not need a reader at all. And so then you just have the chip and your smartphone and take a picture directly without any sort of reading. And is it something you see in the future three months, three years? <laughs> uh, that, that's years in the future. We have uh, a number of development steps before we even uh, begin to think about eliminating the reader. But yeah, down the road, that's definitely a possibility. Okay. Sorry if you mentioned this earlier, but can you talk a little bit about just sort of what kind of regulatory approval you might need for this? Yes. So uh, we will be going through processes such as the FDA, and it's called a 510K process. So that process typically takes uh, between half a year to a year, and we'll have to run clinical trials before that. Any last questions? All right, one more round of applause for M Fluidics. Thank you.